Okay, hello, uh, thanks for being here so early. Uh, so I'm going to talk about GNU TLS and the uh, GNU TLS maintainer. Um, so let's see if this works. Oh. So GNU TLS is a TLS or SSL library. TLS and SSL are mutual exclusive. It's the acronyms for, for the same protocol. Uh, SSL was invented by Netscape a long time ago um, and standardized within the ITF as TLS. Uh, there has been some changes in the protocol, but not, not very large changes. Um, so TLS is the security protocol used in HTTPS, which you may be familiar with. <coughs> so GNU TLS is like OpenSSL, but the philosophy is to, to strip away all the non-TLS related stuff like SMIME, like low-level crypto. Uh, GNU TLS doesn't provide a AES encryption or similar, it's just a TLS library. Um, so hopefully GNU TLS will be less bloated than OpenSSL. Uh, still, it would be nice to make things more modular, but, but at least it's smaller than OpenSSL. Um, the X509 stuff like OCSP is not supported either. I'll talk about this later. So, so GNU TLS is part of the GNU project, um, protected by Stallman's GPL shield. Um, the copyright is assigned to the FSF, so they can uh, protect us in if there are some problems in some some company takes GNU TLS and puts in some product and doesn't follow the license. Uh, so the lib core library is uh, the lesser GPL version 2.1. We have been thinking about moving to LGPL version 3, but there are a lot of dependent or reverse dependencies on GNU TLS that, that still are using LGPL v version 2.1. So it will probably take some time before we can upgrade it. Um, the core library, or the tools and the surrounding utilities are under the GPL v3, uh, like the GTL, GNU TLS uh, dash CLI, the command line interface. Um, there is also an extra library in GNU TLS called GNU TLS, lib GNU TLS dash extra, uh, which contains some, right now it contains minor things like uh, LZO compression, um, and it used to contain more things, but we have removed things from it. Uh, it used to contain the open PGP authentication, but that has moved into the LGPL part. So, so the majority of the library is LGPL version 2.1. So GNU TLS depends on Werner Koch's libgcrypt for uh, low-level encryption. Uh, in the latest stable branch, it's possible to replace libgcrypt on a per-encryption algorithm basis. Uh, so if you want to plug in your favorite uh, implementation of AES that's possible or if you want to use hardware assisted encryption that's also possible. Um, we're using libtasm TASN1 for ASN1 parsing. It's a very small library written for GNU TLS. Um, uh, it's, I, f I believe it's below one, uh, 10 thousand lines of codes, which is fairly small for ASN1 library. Um, and that's required for the X509 parsing. It's not used for any TLS protocol parsing. For compression, there is, uh, we support libz and libLSO. Uh, actually, the LSO, LZO compression is not standardized for TLS, so it's an 
non-standard extension, uh, but we support it for, for experimentation anyway. Um, that's part of the GPL v3 version 3 uh, extra library. Um, there are bindings for Guile, the GNU Lisp extension um, programming language, and C++. Uh, the C++ libraries are, or wrappers are not heavily used. I haven't seen any large projects use them yet. Uh, hopefully it will take up. Uh, there are some unofficial uh, wrappers like Python as well. I haven't used them myself, but they are, they are out there. Uh, as far as I know, there are no Perl bindings, so if anyone here is a Perl hacker, there's a nice project for you. <laughs> um, there's also a Windows installer um, built using the Mingui cross, cross compiler um, and the NSIS installer which are very nice tools to create Windows programs from, from a Linux environment. <coughs> so some history about GNU TLS. It's an eight-year-old project. Um, Nikos wrote it initially and was the maintainer for several years. Um, I maintain it since I think 2005 or something like that, uh, because you know, Nikos didn't have enough time to to work on it. Uh, Nikos is still around and is the largest contributor today, besides myself. Um, there is a fairly small development team. Uh, over the time, 15 people have been contributing uh, patches to GNU TLS, large patches, so they had to sign copyright papers for the FSF. That's a fairly small number of people, so if you're interested to, to work on a security project, it's a good chance to join the team. So this, this graph is from OLOL uh, on the code size, so fairly stable increase of code. I'd like to reduce that code at some point, but it's still this inevitable curve to just increase. Um, another way to decrease the code would be to modularize things further. Uh, that's something we'll do in the next branches. Oops. So another goal with GNU TLS is to have good documentation. I, talked with a lot of OpenSSL users that are frustrated with lack of documentation. So, so GNU TLS has good, uh, there's a text info manual which can be read like just a user manual or a programming manual. Um, there's also the GTK doc interface used by GNOME uh, for documenting libraries used by GTK and Glib. So we put a lot of energy in, in making things documented and if it's not documented, it's not supported officially. So, so everything that is in gnu -tilis has good documentation. So some of the features in, in gnu uh, which you might not be familiar with if you are familiar with TLS, is that um, gnu -tilis supports OpenPGP authentication. So you can use your OpenPGP or GNU PG key to authenticate yourself to a server. Um, and vice versa, the server can use a GNU, P GNU PG key to authenticate the server to you as a user. Um, it's an interesting feature that I hope will be used more. There is an Apache module that supports it. Um, um, so other features. There's support for SRP authentication, which is if you are not using certificates but want to use a password instead, you can use uh, SRP. Um, it's a good way to authenticate TLS sessions with a password. And another TLS extension that has been 
published or standardized relatively recently is PSK. It's, uh, it's TLS authentication with pre-shared keys, like if you have a static AS key or desk key, you can authenticate the channel using that key. Another feature in GNU TLS has been the server name extension, um, which uh, allows you to use multiple TLS servers on the same IP address, which has been a problem in Apache uh, with mod SSL for a long time, that you have to use a unique IP per SSL site. It's still, of course, you need the support in the browsers, but uh, recent Firefox and Internet Explorer supports it. And GNU TLS also includes X509 tools, so you can create certificates, CAs, sign them, and parse certificate requests, and so on. Oops. So, also working with GNU TLS is challenging from a patent point of view. Um, first of all, the entire TLS protocol is patented. Uh, it's patented by Netscape a long time ago. Fortunately, they are not doing anything with their patent, so, so it's possible to make a free implementation of it. Um, and the RSA, of course, has been the historic problem um, with the RSA patent, but there's always been free implementation of RSA available. Um, the pat RSA patent ha has expired, so it's no longer a problem. Um, the SR SRP patent is patented by Stanford. Um, they have actually released it as a free patent and encourage free implementation of it. But there are also some rumors about other EEC and SPEAK patents that may apply to the SRP technology. So some organizations are concerned with using SRP. Uh, I know that Red Hat's GNU TLS builds disable all the SRP stuff in it. And there's also an uh, authorization extension for TLS being defined. Actually, it's been through four last calls in the ITF, uh, and it hasn't passed so far. There's a last call for it right now, uh, and it might pass this time. There is a patent on the technology by the draft authors. And it's not clear whether that license is free enough to be useful. Okay, that I have some time left so I can take some questions if there are any. Yep. Um, I think the library isn't growing like this. It's mostly tools and examples and self-tests. There's a very large self-test uh, part of GNU TLS, and I think that's a big part of it. I believe the library itself is below 100,000, so it's an auxiliary code. Yep, more questions? I I don't have the license from Stanford ready or clear in my head, but uh, they have been encouraging free implementation and they have been uh, supplying the community with an implementation of SRP under a BSD license as well. So it looks like Stanford is not going to sue anyone, but of course this is a patent area, so you never know what happens to patents. Um, the SRP patents that's more problematic is probably the Speak or Eek patents because they are owned by Lucent or some other companies. And, but then it's a problem of thinking of whether the, that patent applies to this SRP te technology or not. And that's, that's lawyer territory, so it's, it's difficult to answer. But I believe the Stanford patent grant is, is fine. That's the best we can hope for. Any more questions? Yep. What is a security 
Yeah, so, so we have had, I think, five or six uh, security announcements for GNU TLS. Um, and some, some have been, okay. <laughs> I can answer that in the break. Thank you very much for this. Uh, Thank you.